Okay, just a quick show of hands. How many of you guys have heard of generators? Sweet. All right, we're all on the same page. So generators are this incredible new feature that's being released in ECMAScript 6. Um, up until they were released, some of you may be familiar with node fibers. And for a couple of reasons, I personally feel that generators are a much better solution for constructing coroutines. Now, what's really interesting is a couple of months ago, I was doing some research on generators, and I found that there was no information out there. I mean, there's a few little bits on how to do the very, very basics, but I, could, I was very, very flustered trying to find any practical applications. So I did a lot of soul searching and you know, experimental coding in order to come up with the stuff that I'm about to present to you guys. So first of all, of course, you need Node 11. And uh, before I go any further, let me just go through the evolution of Node concurrency real quick. Um, First, you know, we're all familiar with this. It's simple, it's fast. Unfortunately, you know, you get callback hell. I've seen it get real bad. <laughs> That's uh, the Mountain of Woe from Chrono Trigger. <laughs> so promises are really great. It's a monad that allows us to return something from an asynchronous function that represents the reification of that final computation. And we can compose these things pretty well. Now, that original code becomes this. I mean, it's much simpler. It flows a lot better. And if we have more and more of these things, as long as the asynchronous functions all return promises, we can compose them way easier than you could if you had to do everything callback style. Of course, there's a limitation. With any promises, you still have to rely on a whole new call stack being generated. So every time a function is called, what ends up happening is you can recurse it or you can go into it. And the limitation of promises is you can never return to the original call stack. So if you assign a variable to something, you basically have to create a callback function that has a lexical um, reference to the containing object. So what's awesome with generators? Um, and I'll get to how they're used in coroutines soon, but to give a brief overview, they're basically a function with an eternal state for tracking where it is in the execution. So it's basically a restartable function. Um, so how do you use it? You call it, right? So there's this whole idea of a generator, the generator itself, and an instance of that generator. Now, as you can see from my example, you have the generator, which is listed right here, and you've defined it. And underneath, you see I have var gen equals gen, and I'm calling it. And much like an object orientation, you're creating an instance of that generator. Now, when I call next, what it does is it returns an object that has both a value and a piece of information that tells me if I can continue calling next on it. And that value happens to be whatever's on the right-hand side of that yield. So in this case, val becomes equal to six. Now what's really cool is when I restart that generator by calling next on it, I can choose what comes out of that yield on the left-hand side. So that yieldable, right? That's what's returned from next. It contains a value and it contains done. So if you are going through a generator and the done returns true, then that means that you can't call it anymore. So this is about as far as I managed to get from my research reading tutorials on the internet. And I was really confused, like, you know, TJ Holowaychuk is producing these incredible coroutine libraries with it. So I spent some time really researching on this. And I found that the two major uh, uses for this particular object are is lazy evaluation and coroutines. Now, lazy evaluation is a little out of scope, and I'm going to be focusing mostly on coroutines. And a coroutine is a stack of executing code that runs independently of the main thread. And one of the things that's really awesome about generators is generators give us the ability to produce coroutines. Now, that's not to say you couldn't do it before using fibers. Um, it relied on C extensions, and you could only use them on Node. Now that this is a part of ECMAScript 6, we're going to be able to write coroutines right on the browser, which will make things a lot simpler. I mean. I don't know about you guys, but most of the code that I've worked with, with asynchronous stuff, is I am doing one asynchronous thing, and then I use the value from that in order to put that in the argument for another asynchronous function. 
So it kind of makes sense to make them blocking, but in Node, everything is non-blocking by default when it comes to I.O. So in this case, you get a kind of a fine-grained control when it makes sense. So how do you use a generator as a coroutine? So this is basically the pseudocode bones of a coroutine module. You initiate the generator, and then you, take the, you get the first yieldable out of it. Now, here's what's really interesting. While the yieldable is not done, then you get a new yieldable out of it while taking, injecting back in the original yieldable's value. And then when you're finally done, you return the final value of that yieldable. So let's do this recursively. We're defining a next, right? And it takes a generator, an instantiated generator, a yieldable, and a callback. And we see if the yieldable is not done, then assuming the yieldable value is a promise. So this is a really, really, really simplified case. Um, an actual coroutine function in practice would be a lot bigger and take care of a lot of edge cases. But the basic guts are you wait till that yieldable resolves, at which point you call next again on that generator, and you pass in the uh, next of that, which gives you a new yieldable. So it's kind of a recursive loop. So now you just have to kickstart it. So we define co. And that function just takes a instance, or a, um, a generator. And as you can see, return a function that takes a callback that will be given the final value of that generator. And this is basically how most coroutines work. If you create a generator and you want to use a coroutine, you can yield a promise, you can yield a thunk, you can yield um, a standard callback style node function. And you put it in the coroutine, and it will just take care of making sure that it blocks when it hits the yield, waits until that value is resolved, and then restarts it. And what's great about that is now you have a synchronous flow control when it makes sense. So for the real world, I would recommend using Co by T.J. Holowaychuk. Um, and it essentially is a much better best of breed version of what I just showed you guys. Now, here we get to the really interesting stuff. This is the stuff that you probably haven't seen before. So I realized while building out this basic function that generators are first class just like functions. In fact, you can write functions that return generators. You can have a generator that takes a generator and does something with it and returns a new generator. So, I wanted to make it really, really simple because I realized that this stuff was kind of complex when you get the rules. But the rules themselves are very, very, um, um, they just kind of fit together. So how do we create a function that merges two generators together? For instance, Koa, really awesome framework, um, allows you to have an app.use and you put in generators. And each generator flows into the next one. So, First version as a compose, how do you compose these two functions, or two generators? So this compose takes two functions, and it basically returns a function that takes a value that puts it into the original A, and then it takes whatever is returned from the A and puts it into B. We can apply the same idea for a join, which is the coroutine, the generator's version of that. So as you can see, we take a generator one and a generator two, and returning a new generator, and then inside, we're returning a yield. And what we're doing is we're instantiating the generator. And we're passing as the initial value the second generator. And if you take the generator itself, that whole thing, and you put in a coroutine, it will run through them in sync with each other. So the first value will go through. It'll yield. And next is given to the second generator. So you can yield into that in order to go into the second part of the flow. Oh, so um, the reason I put a this in there is when you do call, you have to have a this. And in this particular case, I wanted to make sure that if I were to take that generator outside of it and inject some context into it, that that context would be transferred through. So this could be anything, basically. Um, by default, if you don't give any explicit stuff, it's going to be the global object. So. Um, if a generator is yielded, it will instantiate the generator and run it if there's nothing left to yield. Uh, it will then return the value to the original generator. Oh, wait. Yeah. And if the generator yields to the generator, the same rules apply. So it's very recursive in its um, way of working. 
if you want to compose theorem more generously, it's complicated. But, and I will cover this eventually, but first, you know, how many of you guys like practical examples? So, I could go straight into that, but it won't make much sense. So I'm going to introduce COA. And COA is a web framework that's based around the use of generators. It's really nice. You have full middleware, so you can go down and back up the stack due to the fact that all returns return up this flow. In Express, you're pretty much stuck in a continuations passing style where it just goes down. So the handlers are generators, and the returns come up the stack. So you can write your async code as if it's synchronous. If you yield a promise inside one of these coroutines, then it will block right there until that asynchronous event is resolved and then restart it, which is a lot simpler than a similar case in Express where you would have safe response and in there you have the next and you wait until some event comes in on response, for instance data, in order to run these asynchronous, in order to get the value from an asynchronous event. Oh, and to give an example, you know, you have var coa equals require coa and then you pass in a function and you see that next and that next is the second one over here app.use function next return hello world. So it returns hello world and then this dot body becomes assigned hello world. So let's do a basic to do app. Um, we want to post a to do, get back a list of to do's and delete a to do. So the modules that I use are co body, co root and co static. So let's start with some static files. Uh, there's some really nice middleware that they've already written for it. So these two lines basically allow you to serve up a public directory. Now, if I have a router, I use core route, and you see app.use router.get to do's. It's all pretty simple stuff. Um, all this does is make sure that if you are trying to access slash to do's, that we definitely serve up this generator. And same idea with post, and then finally we can listen to it. Generators. <laughs> so let's add a basic authentication. I'm creating a user and root root pass, and how would this look like in middleware, right? So ideally, you know, if you guys are familiar with Express, you have multiple functions and you can lay them next to each other. So you'd have the auth middleware and then you know your handler. But that doesn't work. Co only takes one middleware at a time. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that kind of sucks. I would really, really like the fact that in Express, I can just kind of put more than one function right next to each other, and it kind of flows, and then eventually got, drops down to wherever the next part is. So I thought to myself, how can I make that possible now that I figured out how to compose two generators? Because if you compose two of those generators using that join, it works. But I want to make it a lot easier for people to take just any two or three or four or more arbitrary generators and mash them up into a single generator that I could pop right in. So I'm introducing Shen, and it's a library that I wrote, and it encapsulates everything that I've learned as far as how to quickly put together generators. It's a toolbox for composing them, and I think that with this plus um, Koa, you get a really, really nice framework for composing your generators as middleware as easily or maybe even easier than when you work with Express. And the best part is a lot of what you know in Express as a result applies. So the APIs that you'll use the most are Cascade and Branch Dispatch. Um, Cascade is basically like join, but it takes one or more. And Branch and Dispatch, there are two different functions. Branch takes three generators. The first generator is passed two re references to the second and the third generator. And based on whatever conditional logic you want, you can choose which one to yield to. And I chose to keep the interface to these really, really simple so that people could build on top of these things. So shen.cascade, you see I have a function here next, and then I console.log, and then inside I'm yielding next. So what is next? Next is literally the function I put in right afterwards. So if I return foo, foo gets returned to the console.log, and it prints it out. And branch, similar idea. So branch takes that function, path one and path two, and I can yield to either the path one or path two in order to get what I want. Dispatch is for even more complicated situations. Let's say I have 20 different potential paths that I want to take from a single area. It's almost like a map. If you were to 
take an object and you fill that object up with the different functions and then each one is a key value and in the original function, you, based on some value in that string, you can delegate it to one of these different objects. Now you can do the same thing with a coroutine flow. So with that in mind, we'll come back to our original problem. How do we make that middleware work? Well, we can create this pass or fail middleware. And this is an object, and it says pass and fail. And as you can see, if it passes, it yields to the next one. What that next one depends on where you pop it in. Now fail, you know, obviously you want to send down a 400. You want to say, hey, shit's not working. And you want to return new error. Now how can we hook this in? Well, first of all, we have to write a new function called authorize. And we see if blah is undefined, as in we don't find the user, then we, or yeah, then we yield to the pass, and otherwise we yield to the fail. So I can construct a whole middleware using auth.middleware shen.dispatch authorize pass or fail. So as you can see, authorize is the first pass function, and then pass is pass, and fail is fail. So what does that next become? Well, it depends where you want to inject it in. So I can take shen.cascade, and I can nest them together. So all of the functions in Shen are designed so that you can compose any of them in an arbitrary nesting fashion. So I can take a cascade, and I can take another cascade, and yo dog, I heard you like cascades, so I put a cascade in your cascade in your cascade. Also there's a Shen in there, or a branch in there. But you get the idea. So now you have a Shen branch, you have a generator hole here, that returns a generator. That generator then gets fused with two other generators, and then I take that generator, and I fused it with two other generators, all together. And the best part is these could be pulled in from completely different modules that don't necessarily know about each other. And now they're interoperating with each other. So can we just cascade together our authorization? Yes, we can. So now what we can do is we can just pop right in there, shen.cascade middleware, and then our actual handler. And now you have an actual authorization system. Really, really simple and it only took me three lines to actually hook it into the system. So if I want to remove it, I can just delete that whole part for testing purposes if I want to. So I want to give a special thanks to Keychain Logistics. It's where I work. We're currently working on our A round, and um, I'm super busy. Hack Reactor as well, because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be in this awesome position to giving an amazing talk to you guys.